Hello, everyone. It's Dr. Brenda, also known as the vegan lady or that fairy godmother of food. And I'm back. <laughs> Listen, today I want to talk to you about some misconceptions about a plant based slash vegan lifestyle. But before I jump into this really quick video, do me a favor. Can you click a push that subscribe button so that the next time I make a video and release it, you will be notified. Plus it helps me because I want to be able to get out as much information as I possibly can. Okay. So again, Today, let's talk about the misconceptions of a vegan diet. You all already know my story. If you don't, please look, look for the videos. It's been posted where I introduce myself and I talk about how I was walking dead for 44 years until I woke up, <laughs> right? Uh, and basically, I talk about um, my transformation or my transition into uh, this wonderful lifestyle, okay? So... What are some of the misconceptions of this lifestyle? Let me be the first to admit, this very first misconception really came from me. So I'm very transparent. I am going to tell you the truth. And that first misconception, keep in mind, it was not a misconception to me at the time, but I was saying this, wait a minute, this lifestyle or this healthy way of eating is too expensive. <laughs> Yes, I said it was too expensive. I will go to the store and this particular store, it really was a monopoly. I mean, they could charge whatever the heck they wanted to charge. And guess what? If you really wanted it, which I did, I paid for it. I mean, I could go up to the checkout stand with just five items and the lady would say, that'll be a million dollars. I'm like, tag, really, what? <laughs> and I would actually look at the five items like, what can I put back? My goodness, I thought I was going to have to take out a second mortgage. I really did because it was expensive. But here's the thing, you all. But I was feeling good, though. My energy was off the roof like it still is 10 years later. It was off the roof. The weight was just falling all off. My skin started improving. The hair started acting right. I was like, wait a minute. So I made that sacrifice. But really, what is happening today? When you really think about it, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when they started making a change and started buying all these healthy foods, then all those other stores took notice. They're like, wait a minute, we're losing money. You know, where, where are people spending their money at? And then they found out that people were looking for healthier options. And so guess what happened? Then they rolled in and they was like, well, let's get some of these healthy uh, items and put them in our stores. And so that one store no longer is a monopoly. That store has some competition. I like competition because it, guess what? That supply and demand curve, woo! Oh, thank you. The prices start going down. But let's just get a little serious, a little bit more serious about this lifestyle is not too expensive. And when people come to me now and say, hey, Dr. Brenda, it is just too expensive. This is the question that I ask them. Have you priced the cost of cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol? Have you? Have you priced it? Yeah, that's serious. Mm -hmm. So that is a misconception. So let's keep it moving, okay? Because I could tell you all a whole lot of stories, but I'm not. I'm going to keep this thing moving because it's a beautiful day and I'm getting up out of this house today once I find my mask. <laughs> okay, number two. Number two is, I'm giving y'all top three, okay? So number two is, there is just not enough to eat. Yep, you guessed it. That came from me too. <laughs> I was like, what in the world am I going to eat? Because when I first started, I was so clueless. I did not know what I was doing. I was sitting around eating salads. I was eating broccoli salad, spinach salad, kale salad, romaine lettuce salad, you know, salad, 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 salad. 
I would have a baked potato, a sweet potato, a baked potato, a sweet potato. I was just mixing it all up. And I did this during Lent. So I, I gave up everything during Lent for 40 days. After those 40 days, I was like, oh my God, what am I really going to eat? I mean, I'm not going to sit around and eat some, some lettuce uh, or some fruits, some vegetables, some legumes, some grains, and some nuts. I mean, who, who does that? And can I do that for the rest of my life? I did it for 40 days, but the rest of my life? But you know what? I was so wrong. I was so wrong because I found out later that there is a lot to eat. I went to... Um, this young lady's home, she was having a cooking class and I was so glad that I did. And if you all listen to my TED talk, I talk about it because I was in shock when she basically said, remove and replace, remove and replace. I'm like, what? You mean to tell me I could still have some apple pie, some greens, cornbread <laughs> and macaroni and cheese? Oh, come on, let's do it. So there is a lot, there's a lot that you can eat. So don't think, don't be like me, you know, about to go into a de depressed stage because I was wondering what all I was going to be able to eat. When in fact, there's a lot that you can make out of this food. Google it, take a look. So many people are jumping on the bandwagon, showing off their food. I'm one of them. <laughs> Man, I could take some jackfruit and you would think you're eating. Don't tell nobody I said this a pulled pork barbecue sandwich. But in this sandwich, ain't no animal getting hurt. <laughs> no, not at all. So there's just a lot. And guess what? It tastes good. It tastes better if you ask me. It really, really does. So that is misconception too. There is a lot to eat. Now the third one, this didn't come from me. This was the number one question, <clears throat> excuse me, when people found out that I stopped eating animals and I stopped eating fish as well. And this is what they would say. Really? Oh my goodness. Where are you getting your protein? I'm like, what? I was like, when I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, when I was a big girl, did nobody ask me then? Did nobody ask me where I, <laughs> where I was getting my protein then? Now, all of a sudden, all these doctors coming out of the woodwork, I didn't even know they were doctors. <laughs> they was coming up saying, hey, you know, where are you getting your protein? You know, you, you have to, you know, you need protein. So, you know, I got asked that question so many times that I put it back on them. I said, let me, let me ask you a question. What is protein? How come you're not asking me about my, my iodine, my zinc? How come you're not asking me about calcium and all them other things that those nutrients that I need? So what is protein? And then I would say things like, well, where is the elephant and the cow and the gorilla and the deer? Where are all those animals that don't eat other animals? Where are they getting their protein? And these, there's, they don't look deficient. They don't look like they suffering. Check out that gorilla. Hmm. Check out that elephant. Really? Where are they getting their protein? Hmm. Could it be they're getting from plants? Yes. As a matter of fact, those of us that have transitioned to this lifestyle that are really focused on the, the foods that we are eating, guess what? We are getting probably more nutrients that we, we received when we was on that standard American diet, that sad diet, <laughs> right? So guys, these are the top three misconceptions that of this wonderful, amazing lifestyle. They are just misconceptions. As I mentioned, Google, go to the stores, look, you will see some of these plant-based food sitting on the shelves. And, and it's just a wonderful place. I'm just excited and, and just happy about my lifestyle. And I welcome all of those of you who want to um, give this lifestyle a try. Reach out to me. I have a program called the 21 Day Vegan Challenge. It is an amazing, amazing program. Now this program is just, if you're ready to transition, come on. 
I'm going to take you by the hand and I'm going to help you. It's also a program for those that said, you know what, let me just check it out. Let me see what they're talking about because I really don't know how to do that. It's, it's designed for you too. It really is. You know, come on in and explore the healthy benefits of this lifestyle. Did you know, finally, finally, organizations such as the World Health Organization, the CDC, the National Institutes of Health, all of these guys are now talking about, oh, yeah, if you want to improve your health, you know, crowd your plate with plant-based foods, right? And that is so wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. Because as I mentioned, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, did I fail to tell you that it's been 10 years since I transitioned? The first year I was taking off all my medicine, medication within three months, except for the antidepressant that I had to take because I was taking them too. I ain't shame. <laughs> I was. But anyway, guys, it is a beautiful day and I plan on getting out there, but I wanted to drop these nuggets and talk about the, these misconceptions of a vegan diet, these misconceptions of a plant-based diet. Misconceptions. Hey guys, this is Dr. Brenda, that vegan lady, the fairy godmother of food. Always, always allow food to be your medicine and never your poison. I will post my website as well. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.